In this demo, I'll show you glue mesh running with Istio Ambient Mesh. The setup that I have consists of three clusters, the management clusters, and two workload clusters. The management cluster is set up and has glue mesh installed, and in this first part, we'll use Istio Lifecycle Manager and Gateway Lifecycle Manager to install Istio, Ingress Gateway, and East-West Gateway on both workload clusters. We'll be using the online boutique demo app where we'll install the front end and a set of back end APIs on one cluster and another set of back end APIs, the checkout feature, on the second cluster. Let's start by deploying the Istio Lifecycle Manager to the management cluster. This will install the Istio operator on each cluster and in turn the operators will install Istio. Next, we'll deploy the Gateway Lifecycle Manager that installs an Ingress Gateway and an East-West Gateway on both clusters. We'll use the Ingress Gateway on the first cluster to access the online boutique app, and the East-West Gateways will be used for cross-cluster communication. With Istio and Gateways installed, we can now deploy the web frontend to cluster 1. Note that the namespace is already labeled with the ambient mesh label, which makes the workloads in that namespace part of the ambient mesh. Next, we can deploy the backend APIs to cluster 1, and finally, the checkout feature to cluster 2. With workloads deployed, we can run the proxy config workload command to list all workloads ZTunnel is aware of. Notice the HBOM protocol in the protocol column for all workloads that are part of the ambient mesh. And we can do the same for the other cluster as well. In the next lab, we'll create three workspaces, one for each team. The ops team that manages ingress traffic, the web team workspace that owns the front-end application, and the back-end APIs team that manages the back-end APIs for the online boutique application. The three workspaces define the list of clusters and namespaces that each team uses for their resources. Once deployed, we can check the GlueMesh UI to see the created workspaces. In the next couple of steps, we'll use the Workspace Settings resource to define the services and gateways that each team can have access to. The Ops team is responsible for configuring the East-West gateway and needs access to all services that are exposed by the Web team. The web team needs to export the services to the ops team, import the services from the backend APIs, and set the options for multi-cluster traffic. Finally, the backend APIs team exports services to the web team to import. If we go back to the GlueMesh UI, we can see the namespaces, clusters, and gateways each workspace contains. Now, to be able to access the front end, the ops team will have to create a virtual gateway resource. The virtual gateway resource configures the ingress gateway on cluster one, specifies a listener and a TLS secret that we've created as part of the setup. The ops team then delegates the incoming traffic to the web team by adding an allowed route table to the web team's workspace. This delegation works because we've set up the import and export settings in the workspace settings resource. Next, we have to create a route table resource that selects the virtual gateway we just created and sets up the forward from any host on the ingress gateway to the front end application running in the web UI namespace that listens on port 80. We can now try and access the online boutique application. The page will load, however, we'll get an error because the backend API team uses a zero trust approach and has blocked all access to the front end and any other apps. This was achieved by deploying a deny all authorization policy as part of the backend API's deployment. If we look at the logs from the Z tunnel, we'll also see the RBAC rejected connection and a 401 unauthorized message. As mentioned previously, the backend team uses the zero trust approach to enforce service isolation and prevent inbound traffic to all applications in the namespace. We can check the workspace settings in the web team namespace to see that we have enabled service isolation. We can test this out by calling the front end application from an application that's outside of the web team's workspace. So let's deploy an HTTP client workload to the HTTP client namespace and then send a request to the front end workload in the web UI namespace.
will get an error because the HTTP client is not part of the web team workspace and is not allowed to access the front end workload. We can look at the logs from the Z tunnel pod again and we'll see the RBAC rejected error. If we repeat the same test, but instead of making a call from the outside of the workspace, we'll make a call from the ingress gateway and we'll see that this time we get back an HTML page. Note that there's still an error in the response, however, that's because we haven't allowed explicit access to the backend APIs. To allow access to the backend APIs, we'll create two access policy resources. The first one enables communication within the backend API's namespace, and the second one allows access to the backend APIs from all services in the web team workspace. If we go to the online boutique tab and refresh the page, you'll see that this time we get a list of products and the initial error is gone. If we try to add the product to the cart, the action will fail, and that's because we haven't set up the checkout and cart services yet. We'll do that next. In the last lab, we'll configure the checkout feature that was deployed to cluster 2. To do that, we'll use the virtual destinations and make the services available from anywhere the glue mesh is deployed. We'll pick a global unique host names and then we'll be able to call the backend API services from the front end regardless which cluster the backend API services are running on. We'll start by applying the virtual destination resources for services in the backend API's team. Each virtual service has a global host defined as well as the selector labels for their service and the port numbers. With the virtual destinations created, we'll update the front-end deployment to use these global host names instead of using the svc.cluster.local names. Once the front-end application is deployed, we can go back to the Online Boutique tab. This time, we can click the Add to Cart button to add products to the cart and also click the Place Order button to place the order. This calls the checkout feature that's running on Cluster 2 and the order is placed successfully. If we go to the glue mesh and click on the graph, we'll see all the traffic that's happening between the services running on both clusters. This concludes the demo where I showed you Solo's glue mesh running with ambient mesh.